If your request code always looks like this, you're missing out on so many extra features and functionality that you can use to make your life easier. In this video, I'm gonna show you five things that we're going to use to make our connection to our Shopify API through requests much, much better faster and easier to manage. The first thing that you'll notice is I have a create session function, which has nothing in it at the moment, a main function, and my if name is equal to main. This is just going to be running the code for me. And in here, we're actually gonna to start to work with what we want to do. And the first one is obviously to create that session object. You always want to use a session because it's going to A, allow us to do all of the things that we're gonna talk about further on from here. And it also uses the same TCP connection every time, so for all of our requests and responses, which means it's more efficient and a bit faster. So we're gonna say S is equal to requests.session. Now we have this session object created under S. I'm gonna return it out of my function here, and I'm going to then add my function in here. So we're gonna kind of create it like this. So whatever we do here now is gonna be represented in this session object here. So we're gonna comment that now, and we have our our Shopify uh, here, I have my credit credentials saved. So from here, we want to actually add our headers that we want to be sent with every request that we made with this session. Now, because we're using this session object, we can just attach them to it by going s.headers.update. What this means is every time we use this session now, it's going to have these headers attached. Now, this is really good for things like user agents or in our case, it's gonna have our API token, which I've copied from my, other, from my other screen. And these are the two that I'm gonna be sending. So this is my access token. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna print out our response here and we'll print out the JSON. This is all t uh, fake data anyway. So when we run this, we should get the product data back from our Shopify API. So we know that it's working. Now the next thing that we wanna think about actually is, well, what about the response headers? You'll find in a lot of APIs that the response headers contain a lot of good, useful information. So let's print those out now. Let's print out those. So there's a lot of information here, but the ones that we're gonna be specifically interested in is the uh, request rate limit. So you can see it here, Shopify API call limit, and it gives us a string back. This is what's controlling our access. And if we go over this, we're gonna get our we hit, our, we hit our rate limit, so we're gonna get A429. What we can do is we can actually copy this header out and paste it in here as a dictionary and say, well, just print out this header. Okay, so now we have access to what we actually, are, our, our total rate count. Now this is useful because what we can do here is we can actually use the next thing that we're gonna talk about, which is a, a hook to do something with this information every time we're making these requests. So to do this, we need to create a new function within our create session, and I'm gonna call this our uh, API calls. Now we need to give it the, res the response object because this is going to fire this function on every response. And we also need to pass in any of the args and the uh, keyword arguments that may come back with this request. This is just for the request thing here. Now we have access to this R, this response object. This is the same as this one here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna put it up here instead, but it's not response, it's R in this case. And I'm gonna say our calls left is equal to this. And now I'm gonna just print out this, print calls left. Now to attach this uh, function to the session, we use a hook. So underneath my function here, I'm gonna do s.hooks, and then we say that this is a response hook. Now there are only response hooks within requests, and I'm gonna put in my function here. So now every time we get a response from this URL using this session, it's gonna run this function. So let's try it now, and what we'll do is we'll just print out the uh, response dot uh, JSON, and I'll just do products and we'll just say, we'll just ask for the length. So we should get a number back instead. So here is the call that we've made and you can see, and then we got our number of products back. Now I've deliberately limited this to 10 uh, just to demonstrate. Uh, I don't know how many products are on this. It's all bogus data. But you can see that this information is now coming from this API call. But we can do more now. So let's go ahead and do a split because this is a string. So let's do a split on this. 
because we are interested in the number rather than the actual string, because the string's no use to us. Now we're splitting on it, it should give us a list back, which it does. We can then access the first item in the list and we can turn it into an integer, which means we can then do something more with it. So we should just get our one back here. So what we can do now is we can say, if this is equal to, and I know that we have uh, 40 calls per, per go, we can say 39. So let's not go up to our limit. And we'll just print out, um, let's just say limit close sleeping. And I'm going to use time.sleep. And I'm going to put in just uh, a five for now. We need to import time. I'm going to use this using PyCharm. Let's give ourselves an extra line. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so it's a bit more clear. So this is basically now controlling our rate limiting within our API without us having to do anything. We can fire away as many requests as we want. And as soon as we get this header back that says, hey, you're on number 39, we're going to sleep for five seconds. Now you can go up to, you can do this another way around and you can say, when I hit the maximum request, it's going to tell me how long I need to sleep for or a retry after, uh, but I prefer to do it this way. It's just a bit simpler. So let's test it out. Now we have this here. Let's go ahead and do a uh, 4x in range and we'll do one to 100. Shopify's uh, API works with a leaky bucket. So we do get requests back. So we're not going to do anything with the response, but what we'll do just so we can see it working is we'll print out our calls left of zero. So we'll know that what number we're on. In fact, let's just print out the actual list. So we're going to see it all come through. You can see we're going up and this is the amount of requests that we've used versus how many that were allowed. And you do get more come back every time, which is why you can see them not quite going up one per one. When we get to 39, we're going to hit that this function here that says calls left and we're going to sleep and then we should gain some more back, which means we don't ever hit the rate limit and we have much more control. There we go. It's gone back down and it's going to do that every time. Now this is a really, though it's happened again. Now this is such a useful way of managing your API rate limit using the, a, the using the session hooks on the response object, using the headers from the response from the server. We're going to look at one more thing now, which I find very useful as well. And this is more specific to only certain APIs. The ones that the ones that paginate and give you a URL back in the headers that you want to access for the next page. Not all APIs work like this. The Shopify one does. I believe the GitHub one does as well. What we want to do is we want to be able to then get that URL out. So let's come back here and we'll remove our X in range because we don't need to make a million requests. And we're going to come back to printing out our headers. So let's check out our headers again. And we've got somewhere up here, this URL here. You can see this is the link and you can see it has next. Now, if we went to this URL, there would also be one that says previous. Now you might think, well, okay, this is a, we, this is a dictionary we can do this. And we'll do, we'll print out the link. Okay, so we get this back, but you can see it's got all of this extra stuff around it, which means we can't actually make access to it. We'd have to chop all this up and one says previous, one says next. We don't want to go round and round in circles, but fortunately requests sorts all this out for us. And instead of doing it like this, we can simply just call links and then say next. This next here matches this one here. So if you're looking for previous, you could put previous in. So when I run this now, we actually get a dictionary back with the URL just like this. So we can then access it URL like so, and we can move on to the next page or the previous page really, really easily. Hopefully you guys are now much more set up for making more professional and better controlled API calls to your API using the extra features that the session object gives you. The headers, the hooks that you can customize, and the links if they are there that you need. If you've enjoyed this video, I think you're gonna like this one here too.